Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about computer power supplies. And a power supply, just like its name says, supplies power to a computer. It converts electricity into the specific voltages that the computer needs. The power supply is a square metal box with a bunch of wires emerging from one end with connectors that fits inside the computer case. And it's usually located at the very top or the very bottom of a standard tower case. Power supplies also come in different shapes and sizes and mounting bolt patterns, which is known as the form factor. And the most common form factor that a power supply comes in is ATX. A power supply is equipped with different types of connectors. These connectors will plug directly into the motherboard or plug into the individual components of a computer. And one type of connector is called the P1. The P1 is the main power connector that connects directly into the motherboard and supplies it with power. The P1 connector will either have 20 or 24 pins. Early motherboards will use the 20 pin connector, while modern motherboards will use the 24 pin. Today, modern power supplies will have a 24 pin connector. However, some power supplies will come with a 20 plus 4 pin connector. This connector is to make it compatible with 20 or 24 pin motherboards because 4 pins can be divided from the other 20 if needed. As technology progressed, another type of connector was needed to supply more power to the CPU. So they added the P4 connector. This is a 4 pin connector that connects directly into the motherboard that's usually located near the CPU. The P4 came out in the early 2000s and like I stated before, its purpose is to supply more power to the CPU. As technology progressed even further, it turned out that the P4 connector wasn't sufficient enough to supply enough power to modern CPUs. So they added another connector called the P8. The P8, which is also known as the EPS, is an 8-pin connector that plugs into the motherboard that supplies even more power for newer, power-hungry CPUs. Then there's also the 6- and 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. And these connectors are used to supply high-end PCI Express video cards that need additional power for them to run. Now these connectors don't plug into the motherboard. They plug directly into the video card itself and depending on that video card, they will use either the 6 or 8 pin connector or both at the same time. But some higher end video cards may require the use of two or three of the 8 pin connectors to supply their power needs. And another type is the SATA connector. This is a 15 pin connector that is used to supply power to storage and optical drives that have a SATA power connection. These will plug into devices such as SATA SSDs, hard drives, optical drives, and case fans. And then there's the Molex connector. The Molex connector is a 4-pin or socket connector. It's an older connector that was used to supply power to older hard drives and optical drives. And these have largely been replaced by the SATA connector. But today these can still be used to power cooling fans. These connectors were oftentimes a pain to work with because it was a hassle to get the pins lined up when plugging them in. Power supplies also come in different wattages, and these wattages will vary roughly between 200 and 2000 watts. And picking out the correct wattage for a power supply will depend on what and how many components are inside a computer that need power. So a computer with minimal components will only require a low wattage power supply, while a computer with a lot of components will require a higher wattage. Now that being said, an average computer today will need a power supply anywhere between 500 and 600 watts. But a higher end enthusiast PC with a lot of components such as multiple drives, fans, RGB lighting, and multiple video cards would need a power supply closer to 1000 watts or even more. So guys, if you're building a PC and you're not sure what wattage power supply you'll need, Cooler Master has a power supply calculator on their website to help you do just that. Just select your computer components and it will tell you what wattage you'll need and I'll put a link in the description below. 
Power supplies also come in non-modular, fully modular, and semi-modular. And the difference between these is how the cables are attached to the power supply. So, for example, a non-modular power supply means that all the connector cables are permanently attached to the power supply and cannot be detached. So even if a certain cable is not going to be connected and used, the cable cannot be detached from the power supply. It's just going to be laying around doing nothing, which leads to poor cable management and it can also restrict airflow, which leads to a higher temperature. Now, a fully modular power supply means that all the connector cables can be manually attached or detached if needed, which makes it convenient because you only need to attach the cables that you're going to actually use. And the cables that you're not going to use, you can just detach them. Now, this makes it for a more clutter-free computer with better cable management, which leads to better airflow and a lower operating temperature. And then there's also the semi-modular power supply. And this means that only the necessary cables that require a computer to turn on, which are the P1 main power connector and the CPU connector, are permanently attached to the power supply. But all of the other cables, such as the SATA, Molex, PCI Express, and so on, can be attached or detached if needed. Now, if you notice, when you go to purchase a power supply, you might see a graphic on the box that says 80 plus. And this is a certification given to power supplies that have at least an 80% energy efficiency when that power supply is running at 20%, 50%, and 100% load. When a power supply is installed on a computer and turned on, it pulls AC power out of the wall and then converts it into DC power for the computer. But during that conversion process, some power is lost due to heat. So as an example, this 600 watt power supply at 100% load is outputting 600 watts. But that doesn't mean that it's going to pull 600 watts out of the wall it actually has to pull more than 600 watts out of the wall because it has to compensate for the loss of power that's going to happen during the conversion. So let's say that it pulls 800 watts out of the wall in order to have 600 watts for the computer. So if it's pulling 800 watts and only outputting 600 watts, then that means that 200 watts or 25% is lost during the conversion which means that it has a 75% efficiency, which also means that this power supply would not qualify for the 80 plus certification because it has to be at least 80% efficiency. But if this power supply instead pulled 750 watts, then 600 out of 750 would be 80%, which would then make it qualify for the 80 plus certification. And it also has to qualify at 50% power load. So at 50% load, this power supply would put out 300 watts, which means that it can only pull a maximum of 375 watts out of the wall to qualify for the 80 plus certification, because 300 out of 375 is 80%. And the same thing goes for this power supply running at 20% load. So at 20% load, this power supply puts out 120 watts, which means that it can only pull out a maximum of 150 watts out of the wall to qualify for the 80 plus certification, because 120 out of 150 is 80% efficiency. The 80 plus certification also has different levels indicated by an additional rating using a precious metal, such as bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. And power supplies that have an energy efficiency of more than 80% are given these additional ratings. For example, if a power supply has an energy efficiency rating of at least 82%, then they will get an 80 plus bronze certification. If it has a rating of at least 85%, then they will get an 80 plus silver certification and so on. And you can see their different levels and their minimum efficiency ratings. And on a final note, if you're going to purchase a power supply, make sure you get a quality one from a decent brand. 
because a few years ago I learned a lesson. I purchased a cheap power supply for one of my customers and then when I installed it and turned it on it actually blew up. So it didn't catch on fire or anything but let's say I learned a lesson. So if you want to know which power supply I use and what brand I recommend I'll put a link in the description below. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.